All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Uh, I'm going to talk about the parable of the sower. So about two or three days ago, I kept hearing the parable of the sower. And, you know, sometimes you're so caught up in thought or whatever you're doing, you can't really process what's happening or what's being said until you read it or listen to it over and over again. So the parable of the sower um, is um, an understanding of how we sow our seed and some falls on good ground and some on stony ground. And um, at its best, I wanna just attribute this here to the heart. So you could go to uh, Matthew 13 and it'd be one through 23. Um, and um, so we'll go there and just kind of like look over what's being said here. What is the Christ saying? And he's always talking about the kingdom of God, which a lot of people um, attribute to outside of themselves. Uh, but, you know, um, if you go on and you look up the kingdom of God, you will find that Christ is always pointing the kingdom of God within. So we want to look at the parable of the sower and its seed and how it goes into the heart. So it says in um, 13, 1 through 9, the parable of the sower, it's um, an allegory of the kingdom of God. In other words, it can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning. And that's what parables are about. So what is the significance to this parable? Well, a man went out to sow grain. Some seed fell on the path and birds ate it. Um, and of course, we know that if seeds are sown on the ground, there's no way for it to take root to grow. And so we want to keep that perspective um, targeting the heart because if your heart has been um, hurt, it can become like concrete and seeds are being sown, friends, people are telling you good things, and, you know, your pastor, you may have gotten prophecy, that kind of thing, and it's just there. So it says, some seed fell on rocky ground where there was little soil. The seed soon sprouted, but when the sun came up, it burnt young plants, and this is because there's rocks there, and so there's a type of um, fertilization and um, seeding that has to take place for a crop to come back. So it says, some seed fell along thorn bushes, which grew up and choked the plants out. And this is where I want to kind of like hang our hat at. Because in our lives, there are many people that have received messages, um, downloads even. Uh, so many people are awakening right now and because others don't believe what they may um, tell them according to what God is saying to them, you know, or what the universe is giving them, um, they may hold that seed or let it go, which means that it's being choked out. Everyone that we meet in the world does not know or understand the levels of spiritual maturity that we're at. And there we encourage one another to hold on to your seed, especially when you can line it up with the word of God, or you can line it up with a positive word of information. And sometimes you can line it up with the fact that you heard it from the celestial realm. Um, the Bible talks about the celestial realm and my point is that a lot of people are going through um, doubt, um, disbelief. Um, they are losing hope in areas that they have received a word from God. They may have received it for themselves or a prophet gave it to them. Um, the thing in the hope is to stand on the word and keep speaking it to yourself so that the doubt the worry and the fear won't come and choke it out. Also that someone that doesn't believe what you believe cannot come 
and choke it out. That you're not influenced by others because you may be going through a season uh, where you're being tested. And the word can be choked out if you have not actually received it in your heart. So I could see two days ago now, after I listened to this parable and I read it over and over again, how it would help me and it would help others because there is a foundation in our spirituality that we have to hold on to and that we have to maintain in order to make it through the transitions and the cycles that we are embarking upon. You know, I remember like two or three years ago, people was like, oh, I'd be glad when 2017 gets um, over with in 2018 and every year it's a, I be, I, I, I'll be glad when this is over. Well, how about we put the brakes on and begin to get our cleats down, you know, put on the whole armor, get vested up spiritually and put our feet down into the ground, the cleats of our shoes that are shod in the, the gospel or in your spirituality and believe nothing other than what God has said to us. You don't believe what you see in front of you unless it is God. You don't believe anything that anybody else is telling you because it takes that kind of conviction to make it over to the other side. You know, a lot of times when we talk about crossing over to the Jordan, crossing over to the Jordan is crossing over into the grace that you've been given after you've been through a battle. You got to go through the Exodus season or the number season in order to get to the Jordan. Exodus means that you're exiting an old season to go into a new one, and the Jordan is what that we call. And that means that even as you're going over into the Jordan, there's something that's going to try to stop you and tell you to stay over in Lodibar. You know, that's what they called um, the Exodus time because it was part of, you know, the people of Israel, the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. And so what is the word of encouragement? Don't let somebody come, and even haters and jealous people, come and choke out the word that God has given you. Stand on your word, repeat the word to yourself, and make that word personal. And even if you've never embarked upon a prophet, the Bible is living prophecy. So here, a man went out to sow grain. And it tells you what kind of sowing is going to help you to produce a new outcome. That kind of sowing means that you will sow into fertile grain.
All right, so um, I think that maybe there might be a lapse in the um, video, but I had to take a call. So the main point of what I wanted to, um, to give is not allowing people to choke out the word in your heart. And, you know, it made me also go back to think about, you know, people that I work with because I do um, personal development and um, that's helping people to see their truth or, you know, even the greatness within you um, to bring that heart out. And one of the things that I do find is that there's something that someone may have said that caused the person to be shut up meaning that they were silent and they felt intimidated to speak what they really felt was true. So um, this is another scenario of how your word can be choked because you might tell someone what you feel and they disagree with you. And it's okay to just disagree. The thing is, is that we meet as individuals and we discuss a thing and if we don't meet in the same place of understanding, that's fine. What is not fine is when you are pushed to a place to feel as if what you have to say is not important. And, you know, when we look at the world all over, we can see that people are raging upset because they have been for centuries with ancestors choked on words. They were silent they weren't able to speak. That means that there was some rocky ground where seeds were sown. Some people had a belief that they would overcome, but those seeds were thrown on some kind of path that the birds ate. Um, there was such a striving to believe that a day of freedom and understanding, or even that, you know, someone would listen to the voice of pain that many of our ancestors experienced um, along the way. A lot of people did not believe that they would be heard. That is another way in a phase of the seed being choked out because every time we have children, um, if they're not taught that it's okay for them to express themselves in a positive way, what happens is that the words in them can become stifled they can become um, traumatized by not being able to speak. Emotional abuse is another problem there. You know, where people are telling you to shut up, what you're saying don't make no sense, those kind of things. And um, you, you know, you've had kids in school where teachers um, and even parents have told them that they were not intelligent. All of this causes children to not speak to not be able to communicate properly. Um, I was raised in a time where children to, were to be seen and not heard. And I can tell you that it bothered me because I'm, an, I'm a quiet person anyway until it comes to teaching. But I, I struggled to find conversation outside of teaching. And I think as I had gotten older, I realized that it was because I, I had the position of observing people, and that's what I was actually allowed to do. You know, always being in a position where others are talking and you're listening, and that has to be balanced out. So when this parable came up, it was giving me a sense of freedom. Also, it's speaking to me because, you know, there's people that don't want to hear what you teach. They don't see the significance. They don't see the life that you're able to give when you tell someone that the parable said to keep your seed in your heart and don't let the devil, Satan, or man, woman, um, or yourself lose faith in what you have in your heart. Always stand to believe. Um, and that's yeah, pretty much it. I think I've given a quite a few quite a few scenarios, but more than anything, I think that if we could go back and just begin to listen to our children and allow them to speak with positive 
um, information, meaning that if we have to go back and teach them how to speak positive, and if we uh, listen to them, then they will speak more. But if we don't, then right there in the house, you have people that are choking the seed because it's the individual as well as the seed in the heart. If I don't allow you to speak, I'm oppressing you. And that means that we can have emotional trauma, uh, emotional abuse. Um, parents could have been narcissistic and did not know it. Um, parents could have been abused and did not really register to know that they had been choked out and some were over talking because they were fighting to speak when they were told not to speak. You know, you watch the movie with Michael Jackson and, and Joe is, um, is telling him to, um, you know, stop doing what he's doing or he's singing and, you know, Joe is telling me, he just keeps doing what he's doing because Michael had a voice. And that's, that's the part that illuminated in him, you know, that voice. And so um, here today, we could go in and just begin to look at also exercising the throat chakra, you know, and just speaking and talking and reading out loud to get it exercised to know that it is able to speak and say freely what it desires without hurting others, right? That's personal development. And if you've been in a place where you feel like, you know, you've been stifled or shut up, email me at ifwbuilders at gmail.com. Um, I do personal development classes in this year area. And um, the classes start at um, $85 an hour. And as um, the time progresses, if you sign up to do like monthly, then the charge is um, reduced. So, you know, go to ifwbuilders at gmail.com and um, set up an appointment today. If you feel like you're someone that has been bullied or, you know, intimidated and you can't speak or you're in a place where you're not thinking soundly, especially with the changing times, and I and my constituents can help you. All right? So you guys have a blessed day. Subscribe um, and share this video. Bye-bye.